but you shall swear. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people who are around you. For the Lord your God in your midst is a jealous God. Least the anger of the Lord your God be kindled against you, and he will destroy you from the face of the earth. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test, as you tested him at Manasseh, at Massa. You shall diligently keep your command keep the commandments of the Lord your God, and his testimonies, and his statutes, which he has commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord, that he may that it may go well with you, and that you may go in and take the possession of the good land that the Lord swore to give your fathers by thrusting out all your enemies before you as the Lord has promised. We see there in the book of Revelation. It's done. It is finished. I have prepared a, a land and a place for you. Right? Where is this place? It, within your heart. Nobody can get within your heart, within your mind, within your very soul and rob you of Jesus Christ. Or your faith. Or your love for yourself. Or your love for your neighbors. Not even their own rejection can take away who you really are. And God says, I, I, it's finished. Why don't you believe? Right? It says it's finished. It says in chapter 7, verse 6, For you are a holy people to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession. Okay, this is Moses. And Jesus says, I don't come to destroy or take away, but to fulfill. You are God's people. Chosen by God for his pleasure. A treasured possession. Out of all the people who are on the face of the earth, it was not because you are more in number than any other people that the Lord set his love on you and chose you. For you are the fewest of all peoples. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping an oath that he swore to your fathers that the Lord has brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery. I've never been a slave yet. You are a slave to sin. In the same way a smoker is a slave to, to the addiction of smoking cigarettes. A slave to death. A slave to disaster. A slave to sickness. A slave. And he hasn't done this because you were good. But because he promised Abraham. You and your seed. Seed, meaning Jesus Christ, one person. Because I promise Jesus Christ everything. Promise to give him everything. And why would God give to Jesus everything? Because God trusted in his steadfast love. In his obedience to God's command. Love your enemy is yourself, your neighbor. From the hand of Pharaoh and the king of Egypt, know therefore that the, that the Lord your God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments. Right? It is the will of God that all men be saved. When are you going to believe it? The day God removes all Muslims from the earth. When God destroys all my enemies. 
And God's saying, you, you are the enemy. You who cannot forgive your brother from your heart. All of us. Chosen by, by God. He says, to a thousand generations, he says, oh, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations and repays to their face those who hate him by destroying them. Right? We, we see in the book of Revelations, the kingdom comes and for a thousand generations. Jesus says, I'm coming and I'm coming with my reward. And he will repay those face to face. Those who hate him. And here's the Pharisees asking Jesus face to face, where is the kingdom of God? He will not slack with the one who hates him. He will repay him face to face. You shall therefore be careful to do the commandments and the statutes and the rules that I command you today. And because you listen to these rules and keep and do them, the Lord your God will keep you, keep with you the covenant and the steadfast love that he swore to your fathers. He will love you. He will bless you and multiply you. He will also bless the fruit of your womb and the fruit of your ground and the grain of your wine and your oil, the increase of your herds and the young of your flock and the land that he swore to your fathers to give to you. You shall be blessed above all peoples. And there shall be a male, not be a male or a female barren among you or among your livestock. And the Lord will take away from you all sickness. The sickness of, of your own heart. Take away from you the effects of the enemies. Being father like son, right? Son like father. Bless those who curse you. God, the, the God of steadfast love, bless those who curse you. And, and they all curse Jesus. Who, who, who brought the, the curse to the world? The, the, the man who had the mark, this image, and, and this name, bless those who curse you. Who was cursed? All the inhabitants of the world. He says, He says, And you shall consume all who hate you. And you shall consume and but he will lay them on all who hate you. And you shall consume all the peoples that the Lord your God will give over to you. Your eye shall not pity them, neither shall you serve their gods. For what, would the, what for that would be a snare to you. If you say in your heart, these nations are greater than I, how can I dispose them? You shall not be afraid of them. But you shall remember what the Lord your God did to Pharaoh and to all of Egypt. Right? That's the thing when we see the signs and, and the wonders and, and the pestilence and, and all the plagues of God being rained out into this world today and we wonder what, what is going on. God is delivering his people. That's what, that's what the signs were. That's, don't harden your heart. And, and how is he delivering his people? Through death. Through death. That's why Jesus come 
to die. He was so obedient to God's word. He was even obedient to the place of death. And not just death, but death by crucifixion. Right? He says. And Jesus responds to the devil in the wilderness with these words. It says, the whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way of the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know that what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you do not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you known that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Right? Because of our sin, we, we die. And yet Jesus has taken away our sin, the sin of the world. And it wasn't because I, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He did it because he loved me. When I was in a place where I didn't believe in God's love, that's, that's, before I was born, he did this. Right? Right? He goes on to say, one more little read in the book of Numbers, chapter 8, it says, it's very interesting. Now listen, as we see in the book of Revelations that God has made people priests and Levites. Right? Right? He says, and remember the book of Revelation. Jesus comes to fulfill. Here's what it looks like in the flesh. And there's what it looks like in the spirit. For the spirit in the flesh become one. He says, Now the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron, and say to him, When you set up the lamps, and the seven lampstands shall give light in front of the lampstand. And Aaron did so. He set up the lamps in front of the lampstand, as the Lord commanded Moses. Jesus said, You are the light of the world. This is Jesus speaking to us, right? And this is what he's doing for us, right? Making us a lampstand, a light. And he says, And Aaron did so, and he set up its lampstands in front of the lampstand as the Lord commanded Moses. And this was the workmanship of the lampstand, hammered, work of gold. From its base to its flowers, it was hammered work, according to the pattern that the Lord had shown Moses, so that he made the lampstand. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the Levites from among the people of Israel and cleanse them. Now, tell them he would go cleanse themselves. Jesus, Moses, the high priest, Aaron, God, all one. God speaks and Moses right, speaks to Moses and then Moses tells Aaron and then Aaron goes to it. God is the Word and the Word was God. And then the Word became flesh. Jesus, Aaron, God, Moses. What does heavenly realm look like? Well, if we can't understand this earthly stuff, we'll never understand that stuff. As God displays himself through us. He goes on to say, Take the Levites from among the people of Israel and cleanse them. Thus you shall do to them 
to cleanse them. Sprinkle the water of purification upon them. Have you ever been baptized? Right? Believe John, Jesus says. I want you to believe John the Baptist. Go get baptized in one who is greater than he. Who will come and baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Right? And, and he says... And let them go with a razor over their body, shave their whole body, and wash their clothes and cleanse themselves. Let them be taken, let them take a bowl from their herd and its grain offering, a fine flour with mixed oil, and shake, and you shall take another bowl from the herd for a sin offering. And you shall bring the Levites before the tent of the meeting and assemble the whole congregation of the people of Israel. We are the people of Israel. We see there in the book of Revelations, there's this great meeting, there's this great gathering, and all the hosts of heaven and Jesus Christ and the Lamb of God and everything are there. And the scrolls are, scrolls are open and the book of life is there and everybody who's written in the book of life has life. And here we are. And before God's new kingdom is made and everything, that there's a, a burnt offering. Those who are thrown into a lake of fire, right? Those who are deceived. And everything is thrown. And all that's done first is a sin offering. All right? Going to cleanse you. My, my body, this world, and everything of this world is sin. And one day it will be thrown in the lake of fire and there will be nothing left. Nothing left but the truth. 